Hey, hello everyone. My name is Angelo and you are on Extreme Graphics Tech. And today, well, today I want to give you my hot take on the PlayStation VR 2. As you know, this is a tech channel and I like to, you know, give you my opinions and my takes on different pieces of news about technology. And in this case, I think it will be quite interesting to talk about PlayStation VR 2, which PlayStation has announced today that it will come out on the 22 of February of 2023 and it will cost 550 dollars or 600 euros and let me say that before and you know why is more expensive in europe uh for some of those who may be asking well to be honest 550 dollars don't include taxes prices in europe have to include the taxes so normally the standard in europe is around 20 percent taxes so when you add 20% to the 550 that's 660 dollars and considering that the euro and dollar are basically on parity right now that means it should cost around 660 euros but it's still 600 euros so starting that I don't think is a bad conversion to be honest I think uh, um, actually PlayStation is probably making more money with uh, sales on the United States than on Europe. Okay, so having said that, as I said initially, uh, it's, been, it's going to be out on the 22 of February 2023 with a standalone or with a bundle that is going to cost a little bit more and is going to come with the Horizon Call of the Mountain game, which is like the most important game, triple A game that uh, PlayStation is pushing to try to convince people to buy this thing. So that's okay, that's not bad. And the same thing, you're going to have like a PlayStation 2 VR um, charging station for the controllers, okay? Having said that, you, ha you need to uh, if you want to have this on first day, well, you will need to buy from, and depending on the country you are, like in the US, UK, France, Germany, Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg, you will need to buy this directly from the PlayStation Store or the PlayStation Direct, I think it's called. So that's the only place you will be able to buy this, and the pre-orders are going to start on November 15th. So if you are very into VR and you want to have this thing the first day, you have to go there. For other countries where this is going to be available on the 22 of February, uh, PlayStation is going to announce what stores are going to handle this uh, pre-order. So that's for you to know. So now I want to say a couple of good things and a bad things about this uh, whole PlayStation VR announcement. I, ha I have not spoken about the technical uh, characteristic of the PlayStation VR 2 in this channel because it's new, but at this point I think uh, most people already know I have talked about this extensively in my Spanish channel, but I think, you know, uh, right now for what it is, um, most people here probably already know all the characteristics, the eye tracking, the 110 degrees of field of view, the refresh panel, the resolution, the OLED panel, which is one of the best thing I think, and you know, the controls and everything else. So I'm not going to uh, deep dive uh, or dive into that because I don't think that's part of this particular conversation. Now, let me tell you that I think this is not a bad price. I know it sounds very high, but consider all the other devices on the market right now and the technology these headset packs I think is a very decent price could be better yeah probably but I don't think you know PlayStation is being greedy here because considering other devices on the market this is a very reasonable price for what it packs also you have to consider when PlayStation VR 1 came out you didn't have the camera included on some of the pack and it cost 399 you have to buy the camera separately which could add 50 to 100 dollars so that already puts it in the five in the 500 price range and it didn't include the move controllers that some game require while here you're having the two controllers which have haptic technology and everything so as i said i don't think this is a bad price also price wise talking remember that it, you will need obviously a playstation 5 to play this but and you are going to have high-end gaming on this um, headset and PlayStation 5 plus this device is going to cost you around $1,200 if you think about what you need to have this sort of power on other devices you will need the device plus a decent computer and that means you're going to spend $1,200 probably only on the computer so as you see it's not such a bad deal at least from my point of view here now, the other good thing I think that is going to come out of this is that there is going to be better production of games. Um, one of the most popular VR headsets is the Quest 
or Meta Quest 2, whatever it's called now, Oculus Quest 2. I think you know it's one of the best, uh, it's one of the most popular. And I also really think at the time when it came out, it cost $2.99, the cheapest one. Um, and I bought it because I wanted to have a better quality than my Oculus um, Rift 1. And this one had a big jump in resolution and quality and other details that made it so much better than what I have. And for $299, it was an excellent proposition. But the best thing that this, and the best and the worst thing that this thing had is the fact that you actually don't need a computer. Of course, that means that then games needs to run with whatever chipset is in here, and that chipset is not the most powerful one. So games have been, you know, lacking in quality, um, you know, uh, ambition to call in a way. So they are simple games, simple graphics, and it's not as good as the games you could have on PC, like for example, um, Half a Life Alex. Or um, I don't remember right now some of the other games, sort of AAA games, and, and I'm trying to call the what these Viking games. I can't remember the game now. Um, you know, and then there are some production games like Bone Work, Bone Lab that still work on these devices, and they, you know, um, but they don't have the same production value as though as some of the games that used to come out to VR and. Of course, that's because they want to adapt and to sell to as much as many people as possible. So the games here run here without any PC. If you want, if you want to play your games on PC, you connect it through USB. But the point that I'm trying to make is that obviously the production values have lower because they want to adapt to this particular headset. So now the PlayStation 2 VR launches, VR 2 launches, I think we are going to see better games also being launched on Steam and on Oculus Store or what used to be the Oculus Store, the MetaQuest Store. Because now those games can also be launched on PlayStation VR 2, which is a lot more powerful than the PlayStation VR 1 was. And that's a very good news because that means we are going to have better you know, experiences, at least for those of us who sees VR as not just, you know, a two hour game experience app with, who wants like very good uh, quality games running on this and we want to dedicate eight to 10 hours to a game, okay? So I think that's another good thing that is coming out of this. However, I also think, I also see a couple of bad things happening. And the first one, and actually both of them are the same one as the good ones. And what do I mean by this? Well. The first thing is the price. I, uh, but you already said it's a good price. Yes, I do think it's a good price. However, the main problem is the moment when it's launching. We are going through a very rough time. Everything is going up. Inflation is up and everybody's talking about recession. So people are not spending as much money on tech as they used to too because everybody is afraid of what's going to happen we have a war happening very close we have electricity soaring we have a lot of um you know the food is going up and people are freaking out because a recession may come and that will impact everyone so obviously if playstation want to sell even if the price is good and the entrance price of vr is sort of good talking about 1200 dollars with the playstation 5 is it still a lot of money? Because people are not willing to spend that on a device like this when it's not needed. And you know what I mean? So I, I don't think everybody's going to be willing to spend that this much money. Um, yeah, maybe the first batch is going to sold day one. You know, after all, RTX 4090 sold in seconds. And we're talking about a 16 to a $2,000 system. But however, this is not the same. The, the, the enthusiasm is different. And that brings the second problem then, because if this thing doesn't sell well, then software for this thing is not going to be created. And that means that we are not going to have the experience I was having, I was saying in the first and the second point I was making before. But this creates another problem. If you don't make good software for this, then what reason people have to buy this? So if there is no software people don't buy it if people don't buy it nobody creates software and this creates a loop so it's important for playstation to support this with very good launches even if it doesn't sell that well or this thing is going to run the same lock as the ps vita which happened when playstation didn't see this you know selling as much as they wanted to or maybe it was the other way around i don't know what happened first it wasn't selling well and playstation decided to abandon it or it was selling 
um, it was selling well, um, but PlayStation abandoned it and then it stopped selling well. So it's, it's kind of a hard situation here. But you know, if, if, if they don't do it, we're going to get into a cycle because we, together with the price, as I said, people are you know trying to save money. It's going to be a rough situation, at least from my point of view. But remember, as I say, I don't see the, a bad price, but it's probably not the right moment for this product to be on the market. It's going to be a very hard proposition here. So from my point of view now, if you want to know, I, am I going to buy this? Well, I, I, I am very excited about the product, you know? I really want it, but I cannot justify myself spending this much money on this because I already have this. And yes, PlayStation VR 2 is so much better. But the main problem I have is this puts me in, you know, I, I could buy out of impulse, like to test it because I like tech, but that impulse is not something that can cost me 600 euros. <laughs> because I I know how VR works. You are going to be very excited for a month, maybe, or a week or two, and then this thing is going to be on a, you know, on a desk and you're going to take it out once every two weeks, once a month, to play for a couple of hours, then put it back, then bring it back again and play some more and maybe finish a long game, maybe do something. But this is not something, at least for the majority of people, that they're going to be using every day. We still will keep playing on our TVs and so on. So I already have one of these. So having two, so imagine if I use it only once every two weeks, so I'm going to use it like once every two months because I will be alternating between the two. And the other problem I have is by having a game some PC, I know I I at least have some future. If Meta proposes a Meta Quest 3, which better resolution, better field of view, whatever, whatever, I know all my games are going to keep working. So I'm going to have an improvement of that. If I start dividing my collection of VR games between PlayStation VR 2 and Meta or PC games, then you know I'm going to have games that are only available here that I won't be able to play on my PC. And that happens already with games, obviously. But the problem is I have to spend another 600 for the privilege of dividing my collection. So I, I'm not sure if I want to do that. I think PC is good enough, especially considering I have an RTX 4090, which I can just put the higher resolution, the higher frame rate, and just enjoy um, you know, whatever comes next and still be playing games. And I'm sure I'm going to be losing a lot of experience with PlayStation VR. So in my case, yes, I would like to have one, but not at the launch because I can't justify for me this situation. Maybe when it comes under 400, you know, I will do it only out of, you know, just wanted to test the tech and some of the games and that will be fine with it. But at least at 600, it's not something I see myself spending. Um, and not because I see it uh, uh, as a, you know, to, um, as an expensive thing because I think the price is fair, but I am on a different situation than many. But if all you have is a PlayStation and you want to experience VR, I think this thing is going to be amazing. However, there is one thing to say, if by any chance or reason these things works or somebody make it work on PC, that's going to change the whole proposition of what I just said, because then I could just either sell this or, you know, have a second one or whatever, because not only will I be able to keep using this for PC, but also for the PlayStation. So that, you know, we have to wait and see what happens there, because I think if PlayStation doesn't do it, they are going to be losing a big market there, at least from my point of view, at least to be able to sell this and make, you know, more developers make games for this. However, that's my take on this. Uh, I don't know what you think about. Are you excited about PlayStation VR 2? It's too expensive. It's okay. Are you going to buy day one? Are you going to wait? What do you think about all of this? I would like your comments in the box, in the comments uh, uh, below. So please let me know. And any advice you have for me, the channel, or anything, please write it with and no hesitation. I am open to all critics. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.